What's up, everybody? So how? How, how? Isn't that uh, one of the native tribe? How? I shouldn't get into that. Many different methods of greeting people. I'm wearing my, uh, my hat. Uh, my Alice in Wonderland hat, if you will, that I ordered online last month. Uh, I just bought it for this one particular event this weekend. Uh, it's called Down the Rabbit Hole, and it's at the Crystal Ballroom in Portland. And it goes till about 2 a.m., then there's an after party till like 7 a.m. We got tickets for both and decided we're going to go have a good time and dress up. My wife's got her little outfit, I got my outfit, and uh, we're going to be the, you know, <laughs> the minority over 40 crowd at some of these events. Uh, but. <sighs> It was funny, I was going to start this video and say, how do we stay grounded? And then just say, what What the hell kind of question is that? Like, there's no such thing as grounding to me. Um, I, I just, I'm talking about, like, how do you live without your head in the clouds? And it's almost like, why would you want to? You know, what is reality? What are we supposed to be doing as adults? And I say this wearing a funny hat because I can dress like... I feel like dressing, and I can go out in public, I can, I can wear silly outfits if I want to, and I don't... Sure, there's a little bit of uh, self-consciousness that comes with it, of course, uh, but over the years it's gotten to the point where I really don't care. I, I guess I really never have cared, it's just that as I got older I started to see a little bit of that, um, you know, I don't know, the anxiety that comes with uh, just dealing with people in general and being judged. But the truth is, I don't really care much about judgment, because what's really important to me is living my life. It's what's crucial. I'm not going to deny that, even though I have a pretty rounded idea of how, I should say, I, I have my own view of life. And I find it's, um, it's an ever-growing lesson, life is. And as I get older, I see more and more things that maybe I should have known in the past, or maybe things that I need to regain from the past. But the whole time, what I'm moving towards is experiences and love and family and getting the most out of life. It doesn't mean that I need to jump up and travel the world and do all these crazy exotic adventures. Sure, that would be fun, but I'm more or less poor. <laughs> I, can't, I can't afford to go out and travel and do all those things yet, but I bring that up because in the past when I was younger I, I had actually taken some trips, like I went to Montana with a friend of mine, we were looking to scout for land, because at that point we wanted to get off the grid, uh, and that was about 97, 98, I'm uh, 98 I think, and so we drove out there and we were looking for prices on land and, and, and trying to kind of escape uh, before the shit hits the fan if you will. Um, that was 20 years ago now, and while well, the shit hasn't hit the fan yet, um, I'm glad I'm not hiding in some, you know, uh, remote wilderness waiting for the world to end or anything. But, I, you know, I was in a different mindset back then. I wasn't sure what was going to happen in the future. Everything was looking grim. And, and I've learned since then, you know, when I had my other two kids, because at that point, my, my wife, I met her right around that time, and she had a three-year-old son. And now he's 22, and... We ended up having two more kids who are now four and seven, so now they have to grow up in a world that is anyone's guess, you know, how, how it's going <laughs> to how it's gonna be in 50 years or even in 20 years. Um, but I, I refuse to let that negativity uh, or the idea of how bad things could get to eat away at this experience right now. Because like I said, if 20 years ago I had been waiting for the shit to hit the fan, I may have missed so many great experiences that I've had since then. One of the greatest experiences to me is music and going to concerts. And I know people who don't listen to a lot of music or maybe have just a few bands they like, but there are some people who maybe all they like is some one pop song. Like for example, my wife's brother, I guess, she told me a story that when he was younger he was just never into music. And he's kind of a withdrawn type of person. He's very um, on his own. He's, he's, he's intelligent, he's capable, and he can socialize, he just prefers not to, and he's kind of done his own thing, and maybe he's dealt with life in his own way, but when he was young, you can tell like, the people who don't listen to music seem to have, they seem to be a little more withdrawn sometimes. It's, um, this, uh, he, she said that he found, he heard some song on the radio and he really liked it, and I guess he played it over and over and over. I can't remember which one it was, it was some one-hit wonder. And, uh, I played it for, uh, you know, for a whole year or something, whatever, you know, all the time, and then that was the only song he ever listened to. 
and I know that some people are just not wired for music, and that's a critical thing to realize. There's a book called Musicophilia by, um, who is it? There's another one he does too. There's one called Hallucinations, and there's one called Musicophilia, and they're both by Oliver Sacks, um, S-A-C-K-S. He died a few years back, but he did a lot of work on how the brain perceives music and how some people actually can't differentiate between tones. To some people, music actually sounds like noise, and it actually really bothers them. And from a, from a person who loves music, there are times when I can crank it up and just it just flows. Uh, I would say taking certain substances can make music sound more rich. People will say that about psychedelics, which is true in my case. Um, but Kratom seems to have that effect too. Kratom makes music awesome, makes me want to dance. Um, it's not that the Kratom does it, it just puts me in that frame of mind. But the opposite spectrum is when I don't want to hear music because it just seems like, it, it's just like maybe I haven't eaten. That's a perfect time. If you haven't eaten, it's late in the day and there's a lot of noise and somebody turns on the stereo too loud and you're just like, oh God. Even if it's your favorite song, it doesn't matter. Taking note of those little differences in how I feel is how I've really learned to embrace uh, music whenever I feel it, you know, but not try to force it if I'm not in the mood. But music itself has moved me. I was listening to The Grateful Dead earlier, and that's what inspired me to make this, this video. I started crying. I was listening to Terrapin Station, and I thought, you know, if you, one of those jokes, if you only had one song to listen to for the rest of your life from the Grateful, like a great, one Grateful Dead song from a deadhead, um, you know, Terrapin Station is just like an epic journey in music. And, but it's not just the song. Somebody who'd never heard the Grateful Dead before may not build any attachment to that song. But if you've ever stood outside the gates at Shoreline, holding the fence, wishing you had a ticket, and just crying and hearing the music playing and blaring through, it, there's something about going and hearing Jerry play that live. I mean, I was able to see at least nine shows or so, eight shows with, when Jerry Garcia was still alive when I first got into them, but those moments opened me up for music. I mean, before that, I was a metalhead. I went to <laughs> Pantera and, you know, Megadeth. You know, my first concert was um, Anthrax opening for Iron Maiden at the uh, Salem Armory. It was like 14, 15, you know. I just, I loved music, but I was really into metal. And when I moved into my hippie days, you know, I was like, oh, shit, the Grateful Dead isn't hard rock? Because we'd always heard Grateful Dead, and back in the 80s, we're like, well, Grateful Dead must be metal, you know. They got skeletons on there and stuff. Anyhow, it was much better than I ever could have imagined, and it, it, since I had those experiences, I've built a connection through serotonin, oxytocin, dopamine, all these neurotransmitters that we have running. Uh, oxytocin is one particular one, which is called the love or the bonding chemical. It's the one that bonds mothers to their children, and fathers to their children as well, and couples together. I believe that certain states of mind produce oxytocin where you can bond to a song or a band or a moment. And I, that's just, I'm not going to know the actual, I don't know the actual scientific reasoning behind it, or if anyone does, it doesn't seem to matter. The fact is that you can bond with music, even one particular song from one show or something. Um, <clears throat> for me, it was Dancing in the Streets from <laughs> May 5th, 1977. Absolutely epic, Dancing in the Streets. Um, and on the, on the other end of music, there's, like, say, punk. Uh, what's my favorite punk song would be No Effects, The Decline, hands down. It's like a, what, 19-minute, 18-minute song. It's, you know, it's a bunch of songs put together, or a bunch of sections put together, but it's a masterpiece to me. Um, the whole song is about, you know, people's obsession with guns and bourgeoisie and the Christians and, and war and all these different things that are so pent up that they want to express and that's what punk music does. See, most punk to me is noise. It's just annoying as hell. Especially whiny punk or uh, I was just not that, I'm just not that into a, most punk. But No Effects was always, you know, a great band that I loved. In fact, you know, I went to see them play uh, at the Crystal Ballroom a decade ago or more, and they were playing The Decline on that tour, the song The Decline. I had to hear it. So I went to the show, and I remember after they were done with the show, uh, or it was like between sets, you know, Fat Mike, the bassist, he flicks a, he, he takes his bass pick, because he plays with a pick, and he flicks it out in the audience, and I was about, I don't know, five five people back from the stage. It flew through the air and went, fell between us, and everybody looked around, nobody could find it. Um, and then a minute later, I was standing there, I had my shirt off and just my pants on, and I looked down and it was 
it stuck to the sweat on my belly and my belt line, like between my pants and my stomach. And I was like, oh shit, Fat Mike's pick. And I still play with that to this day. When I play bass, I use that as my bass pick if I'm going to play in a... It's just a piece of plastic. But those, that moment, you know, hearing that live, it was something else. It's, it's something I'll never forget, just like hearing the Grateful Dead play or any other band. And those are just two bands. Uh, two bands that have been around for a long time. And then we have bands like uh, Modest Mouse, which I really, I loved, used to love going to Modest Mouse. Around the year 2000, uh, we started going to see them, and we'd see them at the Crystal, and it was just phenomenal. Small time show, you know, just the, the bare bones at that point. There was only three of them. Um, I think there was three. It's Eric Judy, Isaac Brock, and eh, it doesn't matter. Point was, they were smaller, and now they're a much bigger band. And uh, another one was Papadocio, that just, I just discovered them about a year and a half ago, and just felt in love instantly. And uh, went to see them last year, uh, bought the LP from their new album uh, at the show. And, and then I entered a drawing there, and I won like an autographed like CD from the band. It was pretty cool. Um, it's like a five dollar donation and they hold charities at their events at their concerts they hold like charity events where they put the money to help causes and needs like they're not a band that's out to get rich they're a band that does what they love and I believe they crowdfunded their last album if I'm not mistaken and uh, the music is great the meaning behind it is epic and I can cry listening to that just you know certain songs like uh, Distant Days is a song that I would recommend by Papadocio. So go to YouTube and type in Distant Days Papadocio and uh, look, watch the video. And it's just, it just shows the potential. It shows the connection also of, you know, how, basically what humans have done to the earth and where we could be taking ourselves. Like, true meaning, and all the art is very moving on it. It's by uh, Jim... I think it's Jim Henson is his name. Anyway, it, it's just great music. Um, and all of the bands that I've listened to in my life have brought me closer to um, that feeling of ecstasy, you know. And, and like, like earlier, I walked through the living room and just the right song was on. Uh, it was, uh, I think it was, I don't even remember, Music Never Stopped or something. It's like one of my favorite dead songs. Uh, I just heard the beat coming and it's just like you start moving and you can't stop and so I know this is just kind of a ramble about music but what I really you know the weird thing is for me going on four days going to down the rabbit hole and wearing these costumes and everything it's gonna be all DJs and uh, you know it's gonna like Sue Han is gonna be there and Atia and Antenne um, and a few other you know DJs throughout the night but there's no bands playing, and things have totally changed. You might say that the rave scene has melded with the, the uh, alternative scene, with the jam band scene, and everything has just totally changed. And this is something that I'm embracing completely. And the key element for me was in 2009, I think, when we went to Soak, which is the regional Burning Man here, and our band had a chance to play. It was my brother and I and our drummer Sam, and he said, we could play this event. and. Uh, you know, we can get into the get ticket. I think you could get a ticket for free if you were performing at that point. Uh, so we, we went down and we checked it out, and there's all these people walking around in strange costumes, some of them with no clothes at all, um, in this, you know, private forest land, and, and uh, little stages set up and lights all over, and, and then tons of DJs. And we were like the only band playing music. Like there were maybe one or two others during the daytime, but totally shocked, totally taken back by how it was all focused towards electronic music and I never didn't know what to expect we stayed there for the whole weekend it was like three it's like four days and then uh, we went the next year and then I went the next year and now I go every year pretty much by myself because my brother's not interested in going to that anymore none of the friends I have are really into electronic music but for me it's a matter of expressing emotion through music and it doesn't have to be music that you're uh, work. Well, let me put it this way. Let me make sure the camera's still going here. There's two different ways to embrace music in my... Uh, there's, there's many ways to embrace music, but something I've noticed that I wanted to point out is there's, there's two ways that mu music can move people. One is a bunch of people who go to a concert to see a particular band, 
and they're hoping to hear specific songs because those songs they have heard at home and they'll bring back emotions from their life or from their past. Uh, sure, people would want to go hear a band, but who, who would want to hear a band before the album was released? Of course, that'd be great to hear the songs, but if you don't know them, you can't build that connection to them. Well, when you go to a rave, or if you go to, like, I've never been to a rave rave. That's not my scene, and I'm not into people, uh, the whole hot dance floor making out, boom, 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 be, you know, I'm into more of the, the flow. I want, you know, I want to meet people, and I want to hang out, I want to dance, but I also want to, you know, have there be more to it. Not just about drugs and, and loud music, but a lot of them are like that. Um, but I want to go to events where, or what I've realized, I guess, about electronic music is that you're not going there to hear a specific song, of course. You're not going there even to hear a specific DJ most of the time. I mean, you don't care. You just want to, you just want the music to flow so it feels good at certain times. And they can take, they can either take clips and samples from the past songs that you do know, or use beats from you know a song that you might know from the past, or just simply use certain tones, frequencies to alter the uh, feeling in the room, the vibe. So it's a totally different situation, but. All of them, for me, are worth embracing. Like, I totally love getting in and, and listening to loud music. I, I feel like it's our nature, you know. We're 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 musical creatures, you know. You know, we've been listening to bird songs <laughs> since the beginning of time. So, um, yeah. I guess that's my video about music. So I'm going to make another one later. So I'll talk to you all later. Have a wonderful day and go listen to some tunes.